Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya. Weird news. Hot gossip. And scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy, happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It's week 60 here at camp in a very special episode. I have been so excited to record this all week. So if you didn't get it yet, Britney Spears' book came out, her memoir. It's called The Woman in Me. I think we talked about me ordering this on an episode of the show, didn't we? Yeah, like two episodes ago, I talked about pre-ordering on a book for the first time, and you were like, wait, me too, for Miss Spears. Oh, yeah, because you got the pre-order of that, like, graphic, like, the design book. With the mm, the coffee table book, yeah. Yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I we had both never pre-ordered a book before, and when this was announced, like, months ago, yeah. I got right on Amazon. It actually was $35 when I ordered it, and now it's 24 Oh. I also hate a hardback. Why? I used to love them, but I think reading them is annoying and difficult to hold. I think they look better on a shelf, but I'm like, for the reading experience, I prefer a paperback. When you're reading a paperback, do you like roll the cover? Yeah, I do. You do? Yeah, because oh, that I'm, hurts my soul. I know. I think I get it. It's for people who are like real book lovers, I think not th- so for me the celebration is just reading so whatever makes it easiest for me i'm just so proud that i read a book because i'm not a reader but i get it if you do love books that might hurt your soul but anyways next I, thing you know you're gonna tell me you puppy dog ear the corners i do that as well okay yeah this is i puppy dog this entire thing that means fold down the corners right yeah that's what i always call that oh what is wrong with the way that i read books no nothing it's just your way i'm under that's attack okay. but you know who was also under attack her entire life Miss Brittany Jean Spears. Mm. I So to preface this, you guys, Jonathan and I were both born in the 90s. We're both gay. Not sure if you knew that yet. <laughs> we grew up on Britney. Yeah, a pivotal part of our our childhood. I think she was the first pop star I ever knew. I, I, was not a, I wasn't like a Spice Girls kid. I was a Britney kid for sure. She was the first person that I like remember being like, oh, this is someone who's famous. And I understood why she was famous. I completely agree. Like I understood the magnitude of when she was on TV in a magazine. I said, oh, that's Britney Spears. Yeah, and she has screaming fans because she's talented. We just like grew up with her. We we're both really big fans of her music, but also we were very aware of what's been going on, as I'm sure all of you are. The last like I don't know, 13 years, we'll really say it since since with the the, the head shaving incident, the breakup with Justin Timberlake, the conservatorship, the Vegas residency. We've seen all this through the eyes of the media. And just, I don't know, the Free Britney movement. Like, we've seen all of it. Yeah, and everybody's been craving an interview, an interview, an interview. But um, this book is the closest thing I think we're going to get for a little while. I think so, too. And I think when I heard it was being announced as a book, I think all of us ran and jumped at the chance to read it. And I think it, I think it's already the number one best-selling celebrity memoir of all time. Yeah. And I hope you guys aren't sick of hearing it. Um, oh, well, if you are, because as we're recording this, it's like still really fresh. We're just recording it a couple days before you guys are hearing this. But um, so what was the scoop? I feel like I definitely should have looked this up. So she wrote this, quote unquote, wrote this. Mm-hmm. Like, But my belief is like she was sitting down with like a therapist and somebody else who kind of put it into words for her. Is that does that sound right? Do you do you know? No, I don't know at all. Oh, okay. Well, I think that might be what it is. I don't think she actually like sat down at the computer and did this. I, and if she did, props to her. I feel like she probably worked with like a ghostwriter, of course, because it says like in the end of it, and like what is it, the prologue, the end log, the epilogue, the epilogue. She says something like to the people who helped me, you know who you are. I'm like, girl, just list the ghostwriters. They yeah. work their ass off on this. Please. Um, really quickly here. So when I got this in the mail, it was covered in grease stains. Yeah. Amazon sent me a book covered in grease stains. It looks like someone ate a bag of Lay's potato chips and then swiped their fingers across the book and then threw it in the box. To me, that is so disrespectful. I spent $35 on this and I was really hurt. But when I talked about it on my Instagram story, so many people said they had the exact same issue. And not just with this book, with Amazon in the past as well. Oh, This is a reoccurring issue. And I don't think it's okay. I don't think it's right. 
no, we should be wearing gloves in the distribution center because it's very clearly like fingerprints and it's sticky. It's sticky. Well, it doesn't. No, it's not really sticky. It looks sticky. It's not actually physically sticky. When I picked it up today. I had, so, I had a little sticky on my finger. Well, that could have been from me. Um, oh. <laughs> I remember buying the Order of the Phoenix Harry Potter at Barnes and Noble in Dartmouth, Massachusetts as a child. My parents bought it for me and I went to my room that night and I immediately took the paper like cover off of it and just had the raw book in my hand and I ate a bag of Lay's chips as I read the first 30 pages and you wouldn't believe how badly I ruined that book. No, I believe it because oh. you took you it was naked. You were raw dogging it. Raw dogging it with Lay's potato chips and that's why I recognize this. <laughs> this is something familiar to the eye for me. I've done this. I know the culprit and I'm really curious how many people's lives you ruined by stating this book cover because it's not just me. Yeah, that's insane and gross. Also, there was a little bit of a miscommunication between me and Jonathan. So when I ordered the book, I started reading it and I told him, I was like, this is going to be so juicy, so fun. We should talk about this on the podcast. You should read it as well. I was like, he's, you guys know he's in his iPad era. Like he's the boy's always playing on his iPad. Take me out to a restaurant. Put this in front of me. Oh, <laughs> could you imagine we're like at Chili's and I'm like, let him play with his iPad. <laughs> you order for me. <laughs> oh my God, that would be an issue. But listen, so he loves his iPad and I was like, you should download it on like an app or whatever and read it on your iPad while I read the, the paper copy and then we'll finish the same time so we can record the podcast. And you were so down. And I remember you sitting on the couch that night and said you said something to me like, oh, I have to download it on the desktop first to then get it on the iPad. Is that what you said? Something along those lines, yeah. So with this interaction, the conversation ended. He was going to read it on his iPad. I was going to read it acoustic style. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yes. you say all the time. Yeah. Um, and then we're reading it at different pace. I'm staying up late at night. He's up in the room. We're just kind of at different paces. I thought it was really ahead of you. And then he comes down the next morning. He's like, oh, I finished it. And I still had 80 pages left. And I'm like, am I that slow of a reader? And in that moment, I realized... Jonathan didn't read it, you guys. He listened to the audiobook. I'm not offended. I just was shocked that you didn't relay that information to me because initially I thought we were both reading it and I was really, I don't know, um, insecure about how slow I was reading. Had I had known that Michelle Williams was whispering into your ear, I would have felt differently about it. And I'm not offended. I was just, I'm surprised that you didn't tell me until it was finished. Like it wasn't something you would have brought up at one point throughout the last two days. Um, I didn't, first off, I didn't know you were the house librarian. I didn't know that I had to report that to you. And to, it would have been different had I been like, oh my God, you're such a slow reader. I'm on, I'm on chapter 50 and you're on chapter four. And also I was seeing clips about her reading it and how everybody was like, oh, you have to listen to her read it. So I said, you know what? Why don't I give it a go? So I did. No, I'm, I'm so happy you did. Cause now we can talk about Michelle Williams, my love. I love her from Dawson's Creek. Of course I do. I was just a little shocked that it didn't come up until the very end. It felt like lying by omission. And I just, I couldn't believe it. Okay. And I can respect that. You felt like I was fibbing to you. I didn't think you would think that way. Had I known, I would have fully disclosed all of this information. But so you're saying if I listen to an audiobook and you're reading it, my my consumption of the information is not. Um, let's just talk about this in a broader sense. Okay. Because I'm not mad at you. I'm just being silly. Do you think that reading a book and listening to an audiobook are the same? Are they in the same category of reading? Um, I don't think. I, I genuinely, shoot me in the foot, I do not believe they are the same. I think there's a lot more effort into physically reading than it is to close your eyes and let someone whisper in your ear. Yeah, I, I can agree with you on that. It's I feel like I didn't read it. I listened to the audiobook, but it is one more book under my belt. It's like when you're a kid and you're listening, you're like gathering around the carpet and your teacher's reading to you. You're not reading. You're being read too. That's like the original audiobook was having a teacher read to you. So yeah, I agree with you that it's not actually reading a book. Um, but if somebody asks, oh, did you read the Britney Spears book? I'm not going to say, no, I actually listened to the audiobook. I'll say, yeah. Save Inch the breath, save the in time. Interesting. I also want to stop you for a minute and, and really like circle back on that comment that teachers are the first people to ever present you with your first audiobook. They're the first Michelle Williams in my eyes. I agree. So shout out to the teachers that are reading to their students out there. That is incredible. How do you believe Michelle Williams did? Because I'm a huge fan and the clips were phenomenal that I saw online. Did you love it? I loved it. I thought she did a great job. I'm still confused as to why she was chosen to do it, but I feel like she could have picked any actress and I would have probably been confused as to why somebody did it. 
what I will say, and I didn't tell you this, is that Brittany did read the prologue, <gasps> which was very short. And I will say I understand why she didn't read the whole book. Why? It you could tell that it was like Frankenstein clips, like just trying to get through it. You could tell that they had her like do it sentence by sentence because the it was a little off. And I, I get it. Like the girl's gone through it. So it would have been really difficult to do the entire book, I'm assuming. You know, I never think about two campers. Um, I'm just referencing a, a fake show here. And just like that, when Carrie had to read her audiobook and she had to talk about big dying and how like the author would have to read that trauma over again and how it you're almost a little too close to it to be able to give it what it needs and this was a very heavy book i do not think that it was inappropriate for her not to read it i was curious on the selection of michelle williams did we ever find out if she personally chose michelle I feel like she might have. She's so random. Like I that. think she did because in the prologue, when she's saying it in her voice, she announces that it is read by Michelle Williams. And she you could tell she's like smiling. You know, when you can tell people are like smiling when they talk. I like that. She did, Like I'm smiling right now. Can you tell? I can tell. Um, but you can tell that she was like excited that Michelle Williams was doing it. I'm still confused. She did a great job, but I'm just, I'm a little I'm just a little confused. Well, I think we found out through this book that she has a lot of fans in the industry that I was never... I didn't know she had connections to. Yeah. So they probably met. Yeah, for sure. I think with all this being said, we're not going to, I don't know, tell you word for word what happened in the book, right? I'm sure if you really want to read it, you should read it. Trigger warning. Some of the content is really heavy. I think you're pretty sure. I think you know what it's going to be about. Okay. Like we all knew what the book was about. It just gave us a lot more detail into the things that we didn't know about. I thought it was amazing. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Especially as a Britney lover. I just, I support her with my whole heart. I feel like it's kind of like unfair to give it anything less than a 10 out of 10, especially like considering everything that she went through, all the things that I feel like as a fan, I have like taken from her without knowing what was going on. A hundred percent. So I feel like I'll give it a 10 out of 10 too. There's more that I wanted, but at the same time, she writes so much about like, everybody wants more. Everybody wants more. And all I'm doing is being that person who's like, give me, give me more, give me more. Like I would have loved for her to go into more details about things, but I understand why she didn't. And she really honestly doesn't need to. That take took my breath away. If you're watching on YouTube, I, I'm like, I'm welling up because also felt like she could have given more in certain aspects, but is that not just the way her life has gone? Everybody just wants more from the queen of pop, mm -hmm. the princess of pop, Britney Spears, bitch. So let's just get into it. We're going to highlight some of our favorite moments, some moments that shocked and awed us, things that we want to talk about. It may kind of bounce around a little bit. It's kind of hard because Jonathan chose some, I chose some, things that we think are juicy that we want to talk about. We're not a gossip column here, but when the Princess of Pop drops a book, we're going to talk about it because that's just who we are. And it's our podcast. Okay, campers? So just buckle in and let's just chat about Brit. Yeah, we honestly have never really talked about pop culture on here. And also, you gave your trigger warning earlier, but we we aren't really going to get too heavy on things. Like, read the book. We're not going to give everything away. Oh, we're going to try to keep it as light as we can. But, like, we have some things that we want to talk about here. Of course. Can I start? Please. This was really interesting. Let's just talk about this. You guys know the iconic song, like, Hit Me Baby One More Time, right? The music video. Unfamiliar? Oh, unfamiliar. The music video where she's in, like, the naughty schoolgirl outfit. Kind of like her introduction to the world yeah. as a pop icon. So she worked with this, like, writer named Max Martin, who I believe is European. Yes, I'm familiar with him. So she initially was so in control of her music production back then. And throughout the book, you see that she kind of gets everything stripped from her, as we know. Like, her control of anything is just taken from her. But back in the day, it seemed like she definitely had more creative control, which I thought was really interesting. So when they... In Initially, her team was like, we want you to work with Max Martin. She said, all right, who has he worked with? I'm like, okay, queen, take control of your life because as we see in the book, things go awry. Mm. But um, this was really interesting. And it's a quote from the book. So I'm going to read it. The night before we recorded Baby One More Time, I was listening to Soft Cell's Tainted Love and fell in love with that sound. You know the song like, but dun, 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 dun. yeah, of course. I feel like I've seen her on Instagram dancing to that video. Probably. Okay, so she goes, I stayed up late so that I'd go into the studio tired, my voice fried. It worked. When I sang, it came out gravelly in a way that sounded more mature and sexier. Page 56. Wow. <laughs> See, to me, like that short little passage, I thought was so interesting. Like stuff like that really tickles my tits. I thought, because it does sound a little more mature and gravelly, and the fact that she willingly chose to stay up late and, like, not sleep so she would sound a certain way, 
that's an artist. Yeah. That's a queen. I thought it was so cool. I think that's very interesting too because I didn't know, again, how much control she had because she was 16 or 17 at the time that they recorded it. Yep, yep. Um, also something interesting, and I don't know if you were going to bring it up, but the first time that they met, they went out to dinner one-on-one. -on -one. I think it was in New York and they sat down at the table, Brittany and Max, and uh, they knocked over like a candle and the whole table caught on fire. And that, my friends, is foreshadowing that they were going to create something fire they were gonna blow up the world with like the new definition of what pop music is and she certainly did she really turned mm -hmm. on its head and set the standard for what you were still listening to music today yeah it is still traced back to the roots of brit so that was my first little thing i wanted to cover what's your first okay one? i love that um and again we're bouncing around a little bit because i did have believe it or not eight pages of notes i had six yeah it was we, a lot we really cut it down we, we're losing a lot here but it's just for the fact of the show because we'll have our normal show too it's just the intro as you guys know so i kind of want to talk about her dad very briefly don't well talk I, about it as long as you need to i'm sorry i want to talk about her dad's dad so her <gasps> grandfather jamie listen, listen up campers this was tea you guys so we all know Jamie was in charge of her conservatorship. He was like the head of it. He basically kept her imprisoned for a while. But what a lot of people didn't know was that Britney's grandfather put her grandmother in basically a psych ward. Mm -hmm. And then she passed away. He got remarried, put the second wife in a psych ward as well. Was the first grandmother her blood relative? Was that the one? Because then he get married like three times. Yeah, the first one was... Britney's dad's mother. Oh, you're right. So this is what Britney's father was watching when he was growing up. He watched his father put two of his, like his first, his mom and his stepmom into psych wards. And what does he do later in life? He puts Britney in okay. lockup. Fast forward to 2008 when her father, Jamie Spears, sat her down. This is a quote from the book. Quote, I just want to let you know I call the shots. You sit there in that chair and I tell you what's going on. I'm Britney Spears now. <gasps> That was the first time I gasped in this book. I couldn't believe it. I'm so pissed, blood boiling for this woman. And that was in 2008 when the conservatorship started and we were none the wiser. I feel like there are 19 different categories of people that wronged Britney, but the person who I think was the worst to her was her father. That is a level of psychotic that I just, I cannot believe. And it gets so much worse in the book at the level of control and greed that really comes down to it. Jamie, take a hike. Can I go next? Yeah. So um, when the confer when the conservatorship first started, she like was talking about like the transition between having her control be t be like taken away. So this was a quote from page one seventy five. She goes, "I knew musicians who did heroin, got into fistfights, and threw TVs out of hotel windows." Not only did I not steal anything or hurt anyone or do hard drugs, I was keeping track of my tax deductions. Because in the book, she says that even though in the middle of her like partying time or whatever, she would still take her receipts and throw them in a fishbowl. And that was kind of her being like, hey, like I know I'm like out here like living my life, living my truth, but like I'm still like having a business like mindset here. Mm -hmm. And if I'm so out of control and can't handle myself, then why am I still able to like keep track of my deductions? Mm -hmm. I also keep all of my taxes on the table. And I just feel like me and Brittany had a connection there. Yeah. We're yeah. tax aware queens. I love that. Another thing she was saying kind of on the same realm was like, if you're telling me I'm incapable of doing things on my own, why am I doing world tours? Why am I selling out shows? Why am I showing up and like on my own and, and doing everything you guys are putting me through? Making her best album of all time during a conservatorship. Like, that's crazy. I think it was before. I think oh, it was. was it? I think it was the cusp. Like I think it came out when she was in the conservatorship. But I believe because she kept reflecting back to that being her favorite album because it was before all this bullshit. And we're talking about obviously Blackout. Blackout is also my favorite Britney album. It's the one that she has the black hair on. It's kind of easy to remember that way. Um, do you have another one you want to talk about? Boy, do I. Okay, sorry, I'm getting a little heated with this one. I don't want to give her too much airtime, but I feel like I can't not talk about Jamie Lynn Spears. You have to talk about Jamie. The demonic little sister. So Brittany was nine years old when Jamie Lynn was born, and Brittany absolutely adored her. And I feel like that's pretty evident in, like, I remember watching interviews of Brittany and Jamie Lynn is on set, and she's treating her almost like a daughter. Like, just so sweet and, like, brushing her hair and fixing her pigtails while Brittany's being, like, interviewed by somebody, making sure she's okay and everything like that. Um, well, in 2001... 
Brittany bought Jamie Lynn a house to grow up in and Jamie Lynn was like completely ungrateful for it. And in the book, Brittany says, quote, her world was the Ariana Grande song, Seven Rings Come to Life. My little sister, well, when I tell you she was a total bitch, I'm not exaggerating. It was clear that girl ruled the roost. Meanwhile, it was like I was a ghost child. I remember walking into the room and feeling like no one even saw me. Jamie Lynn only saw the TV. I've known for a little bit now. Like, we've talked about this before. Brittany was very public on Instagram about how her sister was just a bitch. And I really, I really believe it. I just mm. think she she had her own issues. And I have a quote here that I'm going to talk about after we finish talking with you about this. She had a perception of her life and her her experience is valid in a way that that's her experience, right? Who, who Brittany or Jamie? Jamie. Lynn. Right. So she thinks she's gotten wronged in certain ways. And I have a quote that I'll, I'll talk about this in a minute, but I just, I don't think it validates her behavior. I completely agree because in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, let me give Jamie Lynn Spears some grace because she's growing up like in the same house. Her parents got divorced while Britney was like already a star and she was almost a decade younger. Um, but what I will say is, well, one, Britney heard, found out about Jamie Lynn's pregnancy through the tabloids, which I think is crazy. Um, and two, the Radio Disney Music Awards in 2017. Around this time, Britney was really trying to change. She was doing her Vegas re residency. She was trying to get one song different. She's like, I've been doing this residency for like almost two years or however long it had been. She's like, I just need something different. Give me a remix. Give me an, a, a, something different to do. And they absolutely refused to do it. So Britney was pretty much locked into doing the same shit. So here comes Jamie Lynn Spears. This was a complete shock to Britney, who didn't know this was going to happen. Jamie Lynn's presenting her with the award and performing a remixed version of, what was it, Till the World Ends? Yep. Everything Britney wanted in that song to be changed, Jamie Lynn was performing and then presented it to her sister and all Britney could do was smile. It's sick. Yeah, Britney was like, I'm watching this beautiful montage of my entire career. My sister's on stage doing the one thing I've begged my team to let me do. All I want to do is just give my fans a great show, give them a new melody, give them a new hook or a new version of the song. And here's my sister, Jamie, presenting me with the Radio Disney Icon Award. And I'm over here completely blindsided and just in shock that once again, my sister's getting what she wants and I'm I'm the family puppet. Mm -hmm. It was just, it's sickening. Yeah. And I actually have um, some tweets from Jamie Lynn that I'm going to come back to a little bit later that wasn't in the book that I found telling. Ooh. So I'll circle back to that after next, you. Next thing I want to talk about is the family greed. The level of greed that they have. And it feels like everything always went back to Britney's money. And that's where the control really came into play here. It seems like... I never really know their intentions. Is it because they want to protect Britney or they want to protect Britney's money? So I'm going to talk about her allowance that she was that she got in the middle of her conservatorship. It's from page 201. It's a long quote. Buckle in. It's really juicy. My family would stay in Destin, a pretty beach town in Florida, at a ridiculously beautiful condo that I bought for them and eat good tasting food every night while I was starving and working. Meanwhile, my sister was turning her nose up at every gift I'd given the family. I called my mom one day in Louisiana and said, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, the girls and I are going to Destin tomorrow, she said. Jamie Lynn said so many times she never went there, that this was one of the more ridiculous things I bought for the family that she never wanted. And it turned out my mom went there every weekend with Jamie Lynn's two daughters. So it's like, Jamie's like complaining about it. It's like, meanwhile, your kids are there every single weekend and you're complaining about a house that I bought for the family. Like, why are, why are we bitching right now? Like, how are you going to be that much of a bitch that you're complaining about a vacation home that you don't have to pay for? Like, Jamie Lynn's a bitch and I'm saying it. Yeah, what is Zoe 101 doing for you? I used to love buying my family houses and cars. And there came a point when they started taking things for granted. And the family didn't realize that those things were possible because I'm an artist. And because of how they treat me for years, I lost touch with my creativity. I was given an allowance of about $2,000 a week. If I wanted a pair of sneakers that my conservators didn't think I needed, I would be told no. This was despite the fact that I did 248 shows and sold more than 900,000 tickets in Vegas. Each show paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. One of the only nights that I went out with a friend and others, including my dancers, for a dinner, I tried to pick up the check for our whole party. The check was $1,000 because the group was so big, but I wanted to take them out. 
It was important to me that they knew how much I appreciated how hard they worked. My purchase was declined. I didn't have enough money in my allowance account to cover it. Britney Spears card declined at the Cheesecake Factory. 248 shows sold out, right? Hundreds of thousands of dollars per show in her in, in her name. Yeah. And she can't even cover a thousand dollar tab. It's sick. And she had literally did not have access to the money beyond that. It so as her parents travel in her vacation homes that they they pay for, they control her money because she's so out of touch and she needs to be in this conservatorship, yet she can do 248 shows, sell over 900,000 tickets. She can do that, but she can't have access to her money. Are you going to talk about the diet? Can I say that really quickly? Yeah, talk about the diet. So uh, again, under this conservatorship, they had a chef living with Brittany and she would like beg him to make her food that she wanted. And he was like, sorry, I literally legally cannot do that. They made her eat chicken and canned vegetables essentially for like years. Like a, the, the richest prisoner alive. Yeah. Seriously. Like unbelievable. Oh my God. While they're out living the Lux life, go for it. Back to me? Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm just getting pissed off. Again, briefly, just going to touch on it. Justin Timberlake. I think before I get into this, he, everybody has their side of the story, you know? Mm. I feel like for the first time, I feel like he got the first time to say what happened in the relationship through his music. She kind of had a rebuttal, but she really hasn't been able to say her piece. But when they were dating back in the day, Justin cheated on her with a girl from the band All Saints, which I'm not familiar with. She didn't say which one, but she said one of them. And then she said, Justin also cheated with another woman who is still famous, but she wouldn't name drop. So I'm curious as to who that is. I know who it is. Who? Allegedly, Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba. I made that up. Oh, okay. Sorry. I was going to say Beal. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, that's all alleged. Uh, so these rumors were going around that he's obviously unfaithful. But she was like, I, I'm going to, you know, admit my wrongs too. And she did. She said hookup. She didn't go into detail, but she alluded to that they were just kissing. I'm not sure if there was any more, but Wade Robson. And she said she admitted it to Justin. But every time Justin was cheating on her, he never said anything to her. Justin broke up with her via text message while filming Overprotected Dark Child Remix music video. Good so song. that's great. Um, and then there was a, I think it was an unreleased song. It was Justin's Don't Go in parentheticals, Horrible Woman and Cry Me a River, which we all know um, were about Britney. And um, she said, I don't think, this is from her book, she says, quote, I don't think Justin realizes the power he had in shaming me. I don't think he understands to this day, which is really sad. And then I'm just going to loop in Little Miss Jamie Lynn Spears here because in 2013, after fully understanding Cry Me River was about her sister and she's quote unquote supporting her sister. This is amid the conservatorship that we, the public didn't really know about at the time. Jamie Lynn Spears tweets at Justin Timberlake, weird hearing your music as an adult, ha. Huh? Not only do I appreciate it, I get it. Hashtag J, hashtag cry me a river, hashtag mirror. People were not cool with that. Um, and then she tweeted after that, she goes, I hope you all know my tweets are only to support my sister at Britney Spears. Anything left over was to at Justin Timberlake. Hashtag sister love, hashtag forever. Like what? Jamie was just always so incredibly jealous of her sister. And, you know, that must have been heavy. That must have been a lot. Brittany has this, like, whole bit in it where she really, like, tears into her sister. But she's like, I'm trying to learn sympathy. It, it was probably very difficult growing up in my shadow. But, like, at the end of the day, we grew up dirt poor and I built this empire that you're now, like, using. And mm -hmm. I don't think that gives you grounds to be so terrible to me. And I, I will never forgive Jamie Lynn. I won't. And I don't care if that makes me a bad person. She is a criminal. She a criminal. came out with that shitty book. Yeah, in the middle of the conservatorship. Britney's fighting for her life and she's capitalizing off of it. And now she's on Dancing with the Stars. Well, she she's, got voted off. She got voted off. And because the fans were never going to vote for her. No. I heard she didn't do too bad, though. I heard she was pretty good. I don't care. Yeah, well, it's still a popularity contest at the end of the day. True. Um, but to sum it up with Justin Timberlake, I've seen some comments on Facebook where people are... Like, why Britney? Like, why now that? Because, you know, Justin is, you know, popping up with NSYNC and they were saying they were going on tour and stuff. 
And people are like, oh, this is ruining it. I see it the other way. I see Justin probably was like, I cannot survive the slander that this is going to happen. So let's capitalize on the nostalgia. Let me be backed by a group. Let's try to go on tour again with NSYNC because he didn't know at the time what Britney was going to say in her book, but knew it was probably going to be negative. I understand that it happened a really long time ago, but he just like in the public eye said a lot of said a lot of shit about Britney, made her look really bad when things, you know, behind the scenes weren't as crystal clear. What? What's that song? How's that go? What goes around, goes around, goes around, comes all the way back. Isn't that, a, isn't that him, Karma? Hmm, interesting. Well, um, TMZ just interviewed Lance Bass about Britney Spears, and he immediately was like, it's been a long time. Like, I think Justin has done, like, it's just been a long time, so let's forgive him. So like you said, they're already backing him. Yeah. They're already backing him. Yeah, and it, to me, I'm not saying we shouldn't, like, forgive but i just think that the he gave a joint apology <laughs> only when forced to do you remember that it was on instagram a joint apology wasn't he uh, to was, Brittany and janet yeah which like, i'm like let's apologize to them individually yeah because did you when janet talked about that experience once again she was the victim yeah she like she like lost her, all of the respect in the career and he didn't you know what mm -hmm. i mean i don't know he was my first celebrity crush guys and that's really hard for me to say out loud you know what we didn't know what we didn't know i, I was obsessed with the ramen noodle hair and now i know the truth of the snake in the in the grass i, but I, I love jessica biel i think how he handles how he like navigates this space with the words that he says and the action that he takes uh, is going to be very telling of him as an actual person because mm -hmm. right now he really doesn't look good and I don't know what he can say or do, but I feel like there's something, like an acknowledgement, something more than just an Instagram caption. I think we're going to get one more text post and that's it. I don't think we're going to get anything more than that. Yeah, I feel like that's his PR move. So that's that on that. We're going to end this conversation from the book on lighter notes here because I know it's been a little heavy and it even gets heavier in the book. But I, what I thought was really interesting was that iconic picture of Paris, Brittany, and Lindsay in the car. Let's talk about it. We've always seen it. And we were always like, what was going on there? The girls have lost control. All they do is party. They're doing blow in the bathroom. Shut the fuck up, first of all. Because you know what Brittany says? What happened on that, on that fateful night, on that iconic night? She goes, do you know what Brittany... <laughs> Do you know what Paris and I did that supposedly crazy night everyone made such a big deal about? We went out with Lindsay Lohan. We got drunk. That's it. God forbid, right? As if the rest of us out here don't get drunk with our friends, right? I, I got drunk all the time. I'm Listen, planning on doing it after this podcast. Exactly. We're going to get Italian after the podcast, okay? I'm going to get a little tipsy. I'm okay. It's my life. It's my prerogative. Let the woman live. She had her mom at the house. The mom was watching the kids. The mom has the audacity to come home and be like, you're so drunk, get mad at her. I'm like, mom, I won't say S, shut the fuck up, but I will. You're literally existing on my dime. You're saying in my house that I paid for, your house that I paid for, watch the kids, let me hang out my friends, okay? Mm -hmm. Seriously, she bankrolled the entire family. I just thought growing up, that was such an iconic picture and we're like, oh my God. But at the end of the day, they're just existing. They're having fun. Like, Literally. Is it illegal to have a good time? Apparently it is in the eyes of TMZ. Oh, she also does go into like shaving her head and everything, but I, I read the book. Read the book. Get the book. Um, but I will say that the Free Britney movement, when that started happening, I forget where in the book she said that she was, but somebody had, I think it was like her nail lady or something like that, um, or her hair, her hair girl had told her about the Free Britney movement and she had done really nothing on purpose to allude to the fact that she was pretty much being imprisoned. Um, I think she was acting a little weird from the medication that she was put on mm -hmm. uh, out of her control on Instagram and that's where people were kind of picking things up. But she said that when she saw it, she was like, it was like this communication that I knew my fans just like know me enough and that that yes. was like her only north star that was her only light imagine if the free britney movie didn't happen and i know that there's some people who look at how she posts and how she seems to be acting erratically online and think that you know she should still be under a conservatorship but think about for the pivotal years of her life she's kind of always been a puppet so i mean i'm she has reason to kind of be acting the way that she wants whether that's out of pocket or not i feel like it's who are we to judge but she was just thanking her fans and it like that was the most emotional part for me it was reading like how she was thanking all these people who had done nothing but like support her and they're essentially like strangers like people you don't know on a like a face-to-face -face level but were saving her life 
yeah, I feel like without the free Britney movement, I don't know if she would, st- I think she'd still be in the conservatorship mm-hmm. today. I think the all eyes on her and we needed to get questions answered really saved her life. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of us judge her on Instagram, right? She's naked. She's wielding knives. The girl is kooky. She's definitely not crazy. She's kooky. But who are we to judge? Okay. Who are we to judge? Exactly. I do a lot of weird things. Do I post them online? No. But if I wanted to, I would. Okay. You post a lot of them online. I'm not being locked up. And neither should she. Okay. Let the girl have her money. Let her get her private chef on. Let her enjoy her life. And you know what? After reading the book yesterday, I said, I'm going to hop on the Peloton and I'm going to do a Britney ride. So I did a 2020 uh, Britney ride hosted by Cody Rigsby, friend of the podcast. And I hit a PR. I hit a PR. As did I. Yeah. We both hit PRs on the same song on the same on the same ride. So Britney, we love you. Everybody go, go get the book. But also when you read the book, ask yourself these two questions. Where is Miss Felicia's book? <gasps> and what are these energy supplements? Oh, and I'll leave it at that. Actually, I have a lot more to say. So we've already recorded the episode and it turns out we do have some more stuff that we want to discuss over on Patreon, but we kind of want to get the campers involved in that conversation. Yeah. So if you read the book, even if you didn't read the book and you have more questions or you want to be a part of a conversation, you can head over to our YouTube and comment on this podcast episode. We're going to give people like two days. We'll probably read the cutoff like Friday morning, November 3rd. We'll record that day, get it up that weekend. So if you have questions about the book or you want to talk about the book, we're going to do a bonus episode on Patreon. So if you're not following us on there, it's um, patreon.com slash camcounselors. Back to our regular scheduled programming. Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Morning announcements. Welcome back, campers. This is the part of the show where we share articles with you that have nothing to do with Britney Spears that you should know about to share with your friends and family. Counselor Jonathan, will you start us off with your news article of the week? I would love to. So this article is coming from Business Insider. Hi, I'd like to subscribe. And it is by Tom Carter. And (laughs) what? Why would you want to subscribe? I don't know, because I'm a business insider. I'm a business boy. One thing... People are going to describe you as a business insider. Yeah. Typically, I never see you in the house without wearing a suit. You dress down for the podcast because you don't want to seem intimidating. Mm -hmm. But Jonathan wears a three-piece suit everywhere he goes. I have a briefcase. (laughs) Okay. So this... So we have one briefcase in the house and it's full with the Mejong tiles. I know. That's ha- it. Half of them are still wrapped. We have to play. Can yeah. someone teach us how to play Mejong? I know how to play some of the simple ways, but you just won't play with me. We we don't know how to play. I know how to play. We went on YouTube to learn how to play and it would, the YouTube video to learn how to play was like 30 minutes long and with all these exceptions. And I was like, I can't handle this. It was too much. And so what? We gave up. Did Britney Spears give up? Would Shh. she give up on this? Give me 13 years and we'll see if I can play Mejong. Oh my God. That was so so was that bad edit that out okay let me just say the name of the goddamn title okay (laughs) so a banker was fired after admitting two sandwiches two pastas and two coffee he'd expensed on a work trip weren't all for him (gasps) did he have a lover oh a lover's quarrel 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 Squirrel. Anyway, Quarrel. a london-based former analysis i'm gonna totally butcher the name Uh, oh my god s z a b o L-C-S. I don't know if it's really critical to the story. But... No, but his last name is Fakiti. So I'm going to call him <laughs> Fakiti. Um, so he sued the bank, City Citibank, I believe it was, um, accusing it of unfair dismissal after being fired last year over this expense claim. As the title leads us to believe, he initially said he had consumed two sandwiches, two pasta dishes, and two coffees by himself during a business trip to Amsterdam but later acknowledged his partner had shared some of the food. So here's a little bit of an email exchange with his supervisor. This is so dumb. So um, the employee, what did I call him? Fakiti? Fakiti. Yeah. So he says, uh, quote, this is from the email. I checked the receipt and I didn't see anything out of order. I was on the business trip by myself and I had two coffees as they were very small. The supervisor responds with, the receipt appears to have two sandwiches, two coffees, and another drink. Are you advising <laughs> that this was all consumed by you? First of all, what if I did? That is really ballsy. Was this like repeat behavior or this was one receipt? And I feel like that's what it may have been. They may have been like skeptical of this person. Um, so then Fakiti responds and says, 
I shouldn't have to justify my eating habits to this extent. True. So we didn't get, those were just excerpts from the email. What it's alluding to in the article was that it got a little bit messier than that. Ugh, but show us. he later admitted that he did in fact share the meal with his partner, mentor, mentioning that his grandmother had died recently and he was on strong medication when he was sending those emails. And when he posed the lawsuit. Wait, how many people have used the dead grandmother excuse? You've only got two, really. You've only got two. And it's like, it kind of has to stop after high school, maybe yeah. even college. Mm. I don't know. So then that's kind of where this article ended. But then by the grace of God, completely separately on Instagram, this other article came up. It's from Wealth Magazine. Again, who am I? You're the money man. This article was titled, This Restaurant Renamed Menu Items to Office Supplies So Customers Can Expense Them. <gasps> for, for legal purposes. For legal purposes, I am not saying you should do this. Where is it? It's in Toronto. No way. So a Toronto-based burger shop called Good Fortune Burger renamed its menu items to sound like office supplies. The um, This move aims to help people working from home expense their meals as if they were buying work necessities. While the restaurant says the campaign is just for fun, items like their Fortune Burger now go by basic steel stapler and their fries are called braided HDMI cords. That is hysterical. Yeah, so I took screenshots of it, and I want to list just a, just a handful please, of the items. Please. So you can purchase a mini dry erase whiteboard or a chicken burger. You can also purchase wired earphones with mic or a veggie burger, my favorite, USB wired mouse, Parmesan fries, or a silicone keyboard cover, which is a build-your-own burger. I really wish you would have titled them. I'm I, actually thank you for doing that. That's very sweet of you. I really wish you would have titled <laughs> them like things that were like you purchase more often, like paper products. Oh, okay. I see. Because like, see. how? What if the account, the IRS is like you purchase seventeen staplers this year? That's so true. It's that's a really good point. Like things they should they need to like re up on, i.e., paper. Do people use pencils anymore? You Never could, in an office. You could. Oh, it's work from home. So I'm thinking like oh, common ink, ink. I'm I'm printing at light speed here. Toner, toner. So those are two different things. Ink and toner. That can be a chicken burger or a beef burger. Yeah. Ink or toner. I think it's hysterical. I think it's awesome. And I think the guy needed that in Amsterdam clearly. Yeah, obviously. But um, but I, yeah. He sounds like a repeat offender. Um, but honestly, there has been times I've had two sandwiches. As you guys know, at the beach, I always have two sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Two pastas, um, catch me in a good day. I can do it. I think it's funny that they're just like, mm, you're telling us that you consumed all of this food? And he's like, yeah, and what of it? And what of it? I shouldn't have to explain. And honestly, he didn't. But he did. He he cracked. And he said, you know what? Gam Gam died and I had it. My partner came and it was just sad. And she had a little bit of the pasta because I'm allergic to Alfredo sauce. And I accidentally ordered that with the pesto. What are you going to do? It happens to the best of us. So that's my story. What have you got for us? I love that. Um, my story this week is, okay, so on the it's from the New York Times. Mike Ives wrote the article. I'm going to skip the title. So in the morning of April 13th, 2023, there was a heist of more than 2 million dimes from a tractor trailer that had been left unattended in a Walmart parking lot. First of all, let's start here. Why is a truck carrying money being left unattended in a Walmart parking lot? Great question. So it's in Philly too. <gasps> Not sure what Walmart it is. What Walmart, but... Okay, well, I'll have to figure it out. The truck had departed from the U.S. Mint in Philadelphia hours earlier, carrying more than $750,000 worth of new dimes that were destined for distribution in Florida. Its driver had gone to sleep at his home elsewhere in the city. What? So weird. So why would the driver pick up, then park, and then go home? It's smelling like an inside job. I That never comes up in this article. We'll keep going. Oh. But, Tim, I also thought that initially... Why would he go to bed? Why would you start work and then immediately go home and go to sleep? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the timing. I know there's like certain laws with truck drivers, but usually the truck driver won't leave the truck. They just sleep in the truck. Yeah, because there's also laws with mint and the mint condition. Yeah, it's you're carrying federal money and they're going to let you leave it in a Walmart parking lot. He's got to be fired. Yeah, obviously. He's got to be. And I feel like not that like you should leave any of your like merchandise, but of all things, straight up liquid cash. But it was the March of Dimes? It's just the March of Dimes on this okay. truck. Um, So using a tire iron to pry open the truck, 
and trash cans to transport coins. The thieves made off with about $234,474.80 in dimes. <gasps> Not sure how they got that exact number, but they did. Court documents show. Well, yeah, because they can be like, how many? How much is missing? Because they have every every dime's accounted for. But uh oh, the aerial footage of the truck and the water. There's that, footage. There's dimes all over the parking lot. Oh, girl. Well, what are you gonna do? But the thing is, so this was less than a third of the total cargo, but the haul weight was over eleven thousand pounds, and about as much as two empty shipping containers. How long did it take them? And it also, to me, so they're assuming through like security footage that the the, the thieves they bolt cutted the truck right with bolt cutters, and they used trash barrels to then like transport the dimes right. into like a big white like box truck. How did they know what was in the truck? I'm sure it's not labeled dime machine. Like, come on, let's be real here. It's smelling like an inside job. It's smelling like an inside job. It is very sus, but it's also like, you know, you see those, the big boxy fucking vans. Yeah. And you know that there's money in there, you know? Yeah. I don't know, but I don't know if it was, it, no, it wasn't, it wasn't like a Loomis truck. I think you're thinking it was like a tractor trailer truck. I, but I also feel like, Dimes, was, that's so fucking heavy versus like paper dollars. You'll see the truck in the With, video when I show you the pictures. It was very nondescript. It wasn't, it was like a, tra a normal white tractor trailer. It didn't say like US Mint on it. Oh, uh, did were they um like rolled dimes? I so I don't know because the only footage that they're showing is of the dimes all over the ground, but it's like spilling. So I I believe they were just like loose leaf. That is absolutely crazy. Can I just say they were not rolled, I don't think. Yeah. Working in retail, I have never felt so in control then when i have to open one of those rolled dimes and i go bump 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 while i'm like talking and i'm like did you find everything okay yeah okay and it's like dumping out and i'm like okay let me finish this purchase like that always felt good i actually hated it when i had a line at old navy and there was like seven people waiting and then someone needed one extra penny and they had to crack open a thing and i'm like it's not really sh it's like shredding weird and i'm like i'm sorry did you want to open an old navy card <laughs> <laughs> she's like if you ask me i'm gonna hit you i'm like i'm sorry i'm literally 16 oh my god remember when we were at the old navy at the mall and there was like a complete fight going on and it was like a sunday morning at eight o'clock we don't have to get into it but that was like a couple days was ago was that in Providence? or a couple months ago yeah it was so random like a like a fight match i was like you guys like it's not that deep yeah and my ex was working there he wasn't really my ex that day remember that and then we saw him again at urban outfitters yeah working there. i'm like get away from the retail spaces oh my god it was just, honestly bermuda shorts do that to people but anyway back to the dimes so earlier this year several several things went missing from cargo trucks in philadelphia uh-oh. So it was a slew of crimes. I swear it wasn't me, you guys. Including <gasps> six refrigerators. <laughs> 60 cases of Jose Cuervo tequila. Valid. Frozen meat, shrimp, and crab legs. That may have been me. They were all connected, you guys. <gasps> These four guys are all caught. It was like a slew of men. Mostly in their 30s. One guy was in his early 20s. Um, they were specifically targeting truck drivers coming through the Philadelphia area. Police were able to identify these guys based on the security camera footage and later like text messages confirmed their suspicion that they got their tax. Their, they didn't like say anything like truly like we we got all the dimes. It was more like, oh, have truck here or there. You know what I mean? So it mm. still was enough to connect it. Um, they send the shrimp emoji. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, I'm so hungry. Thank God we have all these thousands of pounds of shri shrimp and crab legs. Um, but it was really funny. I didn't, I forgot to write it down in here, but um, they were at one time these guys they went to like maryland and they like exchanged they gave like a thousand dollars worth of dimes to a bank to get cash and they got it and then another guy put a thousand dollars worth of dimes into a coin star i don't know what their like their thought process was i think like wouldn't that trigger being like oh we lost all these dimes who's depositing large amounts of dimes and that's truly how they found out too well, I think in the grand scheme of how much money they're stealing, that's really kind of minuscule if it's just $1,000. So I think because that's what scammers do with like credit cards, they're like, let me see if I can make a $10 purchase and then like a $5 purchase and see if anybody notices. Yeah, but $1,000 worth of dimes at a coin star, like that's probably going to trigger something. And it did. Honestly, you're right. And there's CCTV footage, like there's CCTV cameras everywhere these days. Ring doorbell cameras, dash cameras. You can't get away with anything anymore. The news station interviewed some truck drivers. I love watching any news station interview anybody. They just found like the craziest people. And they're like, hey, can we ask you something? You have to go to a truck stop most times. A truck stop is secure. And that's the best place to put it. And I said, you know what? Simple, straight to the point. He also was saying that like, if another truck driver saw someone breaking into a trailer, they would step in because it's a brotherhood. 
or a sisterhood, whatever you want to be, a theyhood, I don't know who it is. Whoever you are, truck drivers unite. Well, I know driving truck does pay handsomely, but you I don't think you could pay me enough to get in the middle of a heist of another truck drivers that I, I am not yeah, collaborating with. I just don't think it would happen at a truck stop. I think they're like smart enough to realize that it's not that the area is too hot. Oh yeah. yeah, people just get murdered at truck stops. It's scary out there. Yeah, it really is. I have a very big connection to truck stops. My best friend's dad was a truck driver when I grew up. And I used to love riding in his big purple truck. Purple truck? It was purple and black. I had insane smokestacks. He actually was in a calendar once. His truck was in a calendar for truckers. Oh my God. Purple mattress? It was like before Instagram, we had calendars. Like, oh, you were hot. You got in a calendar. Mm. Like that was a real accomplishment. Nowadays, you just post it on Instagram. Who cares? Back in the day, you had to be chosen for a calendar. Let's get more calendars on the calendar. My nana used to always give us calendars for Christmas. Oh. I don't even want a calendar anymore. I think it's kind of useless. But I love a themed. Let's let's discuss really quickly what hmm. a good themed calendar would be. I love anything. I love flower calendars. I love the baby animal calendars. Give me puppies. Give me duckies. Give me kitties. Give me a little baby kangaroo. I can't think of a calendar that I don't want. I like a sexy man calendar, a sexy yeah. girl calendar. Oh my god, WWE. Uh, a hot, like a cool place calendar. Yeah, oh my god, cool place calendar. Uh, types of corn calendar. We're going to make a camp counselor calendar. So. Honestly, dead ass. We really should. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell something to take a hike. So what am I telling to take a hike? Tell you us. may be wondering. The Domino's on f***ing Avenue. Oh. Thrice now this has happened. And honestly, fool me one time, shame on you. Fool me two times, shame on me. Fool me three times, fuck the peace sign. So the first time that I had ever ordered from there without you, um, I got a pizza. And the middle of the pizza, I'm kidding you not, was a little raw. Like not just undercooked, but like doughy so i was like mm, that's fucking weird so i just heated it up in the oven and i did what i had to do of course so then you and i order and i tell you what happened and you were like making fun of me for like looking at it you're like i can't tell you if it's raw or not and then you're like hey the shit's raw and if you've ever questioned if it's raw or not you can see it it's a different color it's always wetter you were like do you know how they cook the pizzas they put it on a conveyor belt and then it just does this kind of thing that's and what they do as an avid game girl i do have the nintendo switch game good pizza great pizza and i so i have a full understanding of how the pizza works so i don't know if their conveyor belt is just on like turbo speed because i think it is i think it is too because guess what guys we got another raw pizza and i do not want to hear oh change the setting to well done i do that every time i'm a well done girly i like a crispy pizza these people are sending us raw pizzas and then what happens when i complain you might be asking why don't we call and complain well one i'm ordering it through the domino's app i'm not calling anybody and two if you complain through the domino's app they're not going to fix your situation they're going to be like here are your pizza points for your next pizza well guess what my next pizza i want it cooked bitch i know they give you a free pizza another free pizza the pie reward and the pizza's fucking raw i don't want another free raw pizza i want a cooked pizza and i love domino's i love them and this isn't a reflection on the entire company it's a reflection on this one location that we are boycotting i'm boycotting the pizza yeah honestly that's the whole thing is we really just need to reset our location to something else but it's not even like it's coming fast this is our order of operations right i'm gonna order my mushroom and onion pizza it's coming pretty fast no it it's not 30 minutes babe last time 30 minutes that's pretty fast i waited 66 minutes once and i know it's like if it's over an hour it's a free pizza i don't need the free pizza i just want to cook pizza because then oh, i have to go under the cabinet i gotta you like my legs are tired my arms are tired from everything that i've been doing through the day i'm exhausted i don't want to have to go to the kitchen that's why i ordered pizza to begin with i gotta lift the heavy heavy pizza pizzazz presto dual uh, oven pizza oven for the countertop and i have to plug that in preheat it and then i gotta throw the pizza on there and then it's crispy as hell and it's i don't know what happened to the flavor she left the party i know it almost dehydrates it a little bit it's good if you're making a pizza from scratch it's not the best for reheating in a way it is it just it can't fix a raw pizza from domino's it no can't. And I just I also don't want citronella, so I don't want a raw pizza. And and that's that on that. My take a hike, the Domino's pizza on <laughs> Avenue. I, I appreciate it and I completely support it. Thank you. I'm out of breath and I have to pee. Um, my take a hike this week is when your flashlight is on and someone tells you it's on. It is a nice gesture. It is just really degrading. It is 
back in the day, all people could think about was, oh, is there toilet paper on my shoe? Oh, do I have a sesame seed in my tooth? Now it's, oh, your flashlight's on. At that point, I'm just going to go home because I can't recover from this. It is such an emotional experience for me. I don't know why I'm so embarrassed. Like, what did I do to deserve this? The iPhone needs to figure out that feature. Fuck off, okay? Like, maybe check if I'm in a dark area when we turn that motherfucker on. Because half the time it's either on in my pocket or in my back pocket or my hand. And oh, you're f- how long has it been on? Who in this room saw it on? And I didn't. I don't expect anyone to tell me because I would have been upset. And if anyone told, I just don't want it to happen. I hate it. It makes me so emotional. It's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. It happened to me at St. Jude in a theater. Every single person who was sitting down could see that I walked past, that my flashlight was on. And to me, I was always like, that's an old people thing. Like that happens to old people all the time. It's been happening to me more and more frequently. I am old people. We're old people now. And I, oh, your flashlight's on. Okay. Do you have an Uber discount code? Because I need to go home I, now. I'd rather be in a 13 year conservator show. That was, oh, that wasn't stop. right. We're not doing that on the episode. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You guys, nobody fucking clip that. I'm going to clip you. I swear to God. Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week. Hey, we're done bitching. Even though Domino's, figure out your fucking pizza. I'm so pissed. I would rather have my flashlight on in public than have a raw pizza ever again from Domino's. Yeah. Because that's how much I care about that delicious garlicky crust. Wait, that would be kind of fun at the end of our take of hikes if like, if we remember it. To be like, which one out of these two shitty things would you rather? Wait, so fun. So Conversation I would, starter. I would rather have the, the flashlight. flashlight on. For sure. I agree. Me but too. Anyways, moving on to Camper Crush of the Week. This is the part of the show where we share what we're loving, who we're supporting, who needs an accolade, who needs a Radio Disney Icon Award themselves. <laughs> That was really funny and clever. Um, Jonathan, would you like to go first? I would love to go first. So my Camp Crush of the Week goes out to self-checkout. Oh. As much as I really appreciate and I adore our frontline workers, a la Produce Junction, sometimes I just really am not feeling like talking. Like, I don't need everybody seeing me, you know, as they scan things across. I don't really need you seeing me replenish my fleet enema supply and my smuckers magic shell hardening chocolate syrup i don't need the judgment but i will say sometimes when you are scanning at self-checkout you'll like scan it and they'll be like move your filthy adult novel to the bag it does not say that well it's sometimes it'll like yell what it is it's like move your organic lemons to the bag and you don't really need to be yelling my business like that but i do appreciate self-checkout for what it's worth i kind of like to do my own thing i'm very particular with the way i bag things and i feel like i'm just kind of working there myself it's like the the little barbie cashier thing it's like pretty much being at that again i think you love it because you worked at a wegmans and you used to do the chat you used to like be the the grocer you were baby you literally were the original local grocer i it's you know the the cross i bear so you love to like put in your little key code what is the key code for banana 4011 cucumber oh i don't know cucumber i know lime is 5053 or 4048 lemon is 5053 that's so cool that you remember yeah i remember i know and then if they're organic there's a nine at the beginning of it no way Mm -hmm. so like an organic banana would be 94011 that's smart Mm -hmm. um i like self-checkout i do find it to be sometimes more stressful it's not my camper crush of the week like sometimes when the light's blinking and you just have to stand there like kevin james in his kitchen with his arms crossed leaning against the counter no i'm just like well uh, help me out i'm not smirking i'm usually stressed out or it's like you're trying to bag something and things you're stealing and you're not and i just i think it's a lot i do like when a self-checkout is an option. I like that it's an option. I sometimes want to just interact. I'm an interactor. I always have been. It's totally valid. Can we just say, the one time, you and I, I don't know if we talked about this on the podcast, we went to Stop and Shop and something didn't scan. And the woman, I guess, thought we were like stealing or something, in front of us, pulls up playback and plays the security camera that we didn't know was like above us. We didn't steal it. We weren't stealing anything. We weren't stealing, no. And she plays it back to make sure we paid for everything right in front of us. I was like, I could not believe that. I know. I was gagged. I'm like, imagine if we did steal something. They yeah. They would have known. They would have arrested us. Ugh, jeez. Anyway, my Camper Crush of the Week goes out to self-checkout, as well as Britney Spears, obviously. But we had to move on from that. Of course. Mine is also Britney, but also Puppy Yoga. Oh, yay. Yeah, this week I did it a brand trip with Aldi. It was just in the city, but it was amazing. I had like a nice dinner with them. I'm really on my Aldi era. I really love working 
working with them. They're really amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so after our like fun night out with dinner and drinks and stuff like that, the next morning they sent us an Uber to so this part of New York. It's like in this undescript location, third floor up, walking up, and inside was puppy yoga, which is exactly what you think it sounds like, a yoga class with puppies running around. So there was about eight schnauzers running around. The only issue was I was so hung over from the night before because I went a little hard that um, I was sweating and nauseous. The alcohol was leaving all of my pores. I'm nauseous. I don't work out with people. So instead of doing the yoga, I just sat in the corner of the room and just played with the puppies. Yeah. And I didn't want to seem like I was being disrespectful and not doing the yoga. I'm just like, well, listen, you got me liquored up and you want me to do like, I don't know, what are, what's a downward dog? I'll throw up. I was so hungover. And this body, it's gassy. They had us in a position and I said, if I lean forward, the girl who's behind me with 1.6 million followers on Instagram is going to get a cloud of smoke. She's going to catch the smoke. She's going to catch that smoke and, and it's going to vomit. It's going to be coming out of my asshole. So I was like, I got to sit this one out. So I pretended to be a little more hungover than I was only because this bitch farts and I can't. <laughs> I so don't can't apologize for the way that your body moves. Thank you. There was about eight schnauzer puppies in the room. They were all siblings. It was really fun, but they were really rambunctious, almost borderline distracting from the yoga. Like, I don't know how people could really focus when a puppy's running over your face. It was really funny too. There was a girl puppy. She was the run and she had a purple collar on. Mm. They all had different collar, collar, color collars. And she was an absolute nightmare. She bit my hand so hard. She would bite all of her siblings. She would pick a fight with everybody in the room. She bit my um my tunnel because my ears are gauged. So she literally bit it and I thought she was gonna rip it out. She like I get it, you're the run and you have to really protect yourself, but like she took it to a new level that was a little extreme. I didn't like her. I loved everybody else. Blue collar was my favorite. Yeah, blue collar. We love a blue collar worker. We love a blue collar worker. We love a blue collar puppy. That's the one that I named um, Charlize Theron. And and that was the perfect name because an icon in the silver screen and on the television screen. So. Yeah, but the purple collar was, dare I say it, a B I C T H. I've never done a, a workout class in my life. I've never done a yoga class. Um, I'm always like a solo out worker outer. Um, I thought it was fun. I think if you've ever thought about doing goat yoga, I can see the allure of it now. I think it's a little distracting, so don't go for your best workout ever. But like, I don't know, just playing with a, a eight different puppies in a room, how can that not be my crush of the week? What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. Remember when I used to sing at the intro of this? Yeah, why don't you do it anymore? I are you shy? I just like, feel like I couldn't come up with like different medleys anymore. Oh yeah, yeah. That was like give kind us a little break. break. I know Britney's really hard to sing. Like, mm, yeah, her voice is somewhat different than any other person I've ever heard. Like, can I be honest about her voice? Yeah, like I love it. But what is it? It's not actually that good. No, I think she has range and she definitely channeled a, like a more baby voice kind of. And on Blackout, if you listen to it, I'm not calling her sleazy, but to me, it's like the sleazy kind of like whiny, almost like in Toxic when it's like, nah, 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 nah. her voice is just kind of like, let's see you looking at me like I'm some kind of freak. Great singer. Yeah, she's like, no, it's like her music is so good. But like, if I put her like on stage next to Jennifer Hudson, like no competition, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but let's not pit women against women. No, I'm put, I'm pitting voice against voice. Should I put her against a man? Like, come on. Oh like, I'm talking about just vocally. Her voice isn't at the level of the best singers in the world. Her music is though. It's more than just the sound. It's the production. It's the storyline. It's everything that comes with it. I don't know. I just feel that way. I'm okay. Sorry. Really quickly, speaking of not pitting women against women, Christian Aguilera in the book, I wanted more. She made one weird kind of comment about her. She talked about how when they were younger in the Mickey Mouse Club, they shared a room. But there was she something said, else I, later. I shared a room with a girl from Pennsylvania named Christina Aguilera. Didn't bring her up again. And then she later, she yeah. later she talked about the cover with Justin and Christina. And she said it felt like salt in the wound. But she didn't think that Christina meant anything by it. She thought Justin meant something by it. Also, there were pages omitted. And I, I don't know the exact number off the tip of my deck, but I know out there that there were pages omitted 
what were in those pages. Yeah. Like we said before, we're not going to beg for more. Gimme, give gimme give more. Yeah. Um, but I'm begging for more. And I'm yeah. going to be honest, I there was a couple of sections that I felt like I was just getting a taste of what really happened. But maybe legally she can't talk about. Maybe there's NDAs. Maybe there's just too much. But there's more to the story here. Mm -hmm. um, but we're all for her healing journey. And this week, both of our songs are going to be Britney songs. It's Britney's year. It's Britney's life. It's Britney's come up again and again and again. So we had to celebrate her. Do you want to tell your song first? Sure. Mine is an oldie but goodie. It is from her album, Oops, I Did It Again. And the song is What You See Is What You Get. To me, I don't think it's like a B-side, but I didn't realize that a lot of people didn't listen to it. I think it's because I listened to the CD, you know, when you have your tracks. And that's the one that I would constantly go back to. But that is such a good song. So if you're not put onto it, you are now. What you see is what you get. This is me. Hey, you. If you want me, don't forget. You should take me as I am. Because I can promise you, baby, what you see is what you get. We might get a copyright because that was so identical to the original. Anyway, that's my camp song. What's your camp song? Is that your favorite Britney song of all time? If you had to pick one, would that really be it? No, I'm not. That sounded really fucking shady. I didn't mean it that shady. I just think like, is that it? I... Really? It's my most listened to for sure. Then that's it, babe. I, it's hard for me to come up with a number one, but I would say that's probably number one or number two, but there's like a bunch that are kind of like combined at the top. Yeah, it's it might be my number one. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, hey, if you don't like the song, you don't like the song, but go off. I'm thinking back to how I said that and I'm like, that just sounded so rude. But and I know what you meant by it. I, I, there's no way I could have asked that question without it being rude because it, maybe it's just a rude question. So maybe I was just being rude there. So oh. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. We're I, all growing. I love... <laughs> I love that that's your favorite song. Okay, what's your... Is this your favorite Britney song that you're about to speak? It's the same song. <gasps> Shut up. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, we also... Ha we only have one Britney Spears song on the camp camp songs playlist. It was from you, too. What yeah, was it before? Crazy. Crazy. Be because I talked about Chuck E. Cheese. They did a shot-for-shot shot music video with Henrietta Hen from Chuck E. Cheese, shot for shot. I was impressed. You're still not impressed. But anyway. That what's was your, like, what's your what, episode 12 maybe? Like, that was you. That might have been episode five. Wow. Dead ass. Well, my favorite Britney song has always been my favorite Britney song. Mm. Piece of Me. From Blackout, mm -hmm. which I also agree. In her book, she describes it as her favorite album. I also agree it's my favorite album. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just... It, reading the book, it even means more to me now because the whole song is a kind of about everyone just wanting a piece of her and like the media scrutiny. And we didn't even really touch on that in the beginning, but how horrific the paparazzi was to her. Like she couldn't go anywhere. They were climbing like fire escapes, peering in through windows. Like she had literally no privacy. It didn't matter what she was. It was like a tabloid story, true, false, in between Everyone just wanted to talk about Britney. Diane fucking Sawyer. Exactly. So the song came out in 2007. And before I even talk about more about the songs, I have a lot to say. Um, the top comment on the YouTube music video. Yeah. Can I read it for you? It's nuts how in one of the most darkest times in her life, she dropped this masterpiece. Yeah. How crazy. Well, also... Okay, sorry, I'll let you finish and then I'll, I have something else to say. No, I just think the song is like really funny and self-aware. Like it's just so sexy and it's so Britney. Like when I think about like who Britney Spears is as a performer, this is a great song to kind of like all encompass what I think Britney is so good at. It's like being clever, it's being sexy, it's creating new exciting sounds and just taking control of like who she is. I feel like she's so in control of this narrative when in the time of life, Everyone kind of felt like she was out of control. But do you know about Maya Marie? No. So there's a singer. Her name is Maya Marie. And her dad kind of outed her in like a People magazine thing as being the girl who is the voice of all of Blackout. And there's a song. If you look it up on YouTube, it's, just... called, it's called Black Widow. And look up Black Widow Maya Marie. And it kind of sounds a little different. But if you were listening to it back then, you couldn't tell... You couldn't tell me that that song was not Britney Spears. It's an unreleased song. It's not real. But Maya Marie, people think that she recorded all of Blackout. I don't think that's true. But I know she is credited on the album as being a backup vocalist. I don't want to take away her. No, me accolades. neither. So I'm not going to do this right now. No. I'm going to talk about my favorite freaking song. Okay. Um, Piece of Me. Do you know what it charted as? Number two. 18. Oh. 
Isn't that unbelievable? Unbelievable in a sense that you think it was higher? I should. I think it should have been way higher. Yeah, but what else was coming out in 2007? Because that's like on the curbs of when you were saying that the best music came out in 2006. 2006 like, was they were still coming such out. Such a competitive time in music. Every song was amazing in 2006. Yeah, she also had other hits that was on that album too. I just want to read my favorite part of the song. Please do. I miss American dreams since I was 17. Don't matter <laughs> if I step on the scene or sneak away to the Philippines. They still come for pictures of my dear in the magazine. <laughs> if you sang that to a little Amish boy who's never heard the song, <laughs> he would be like, what? But to us campers who know the song, that was pretty on point with exactly whatever the fuck she was doing with her voice, which I love. Wait, there's one more time. I think actually that's just like the, that's iconic, but this is like actually my favorite line. Okay. Yeah. I guess I can't see the harm in working and being a mama and with a kid on my arm. I'm still an exceptional earner. You want a piece of me? Literally. Like, it's just, it's so, it's like, honestly, so feminist of her. It She's is. like, why can't I do it all? And she did it all. She did it all. And then it all fell apart for her, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm choosing to celebrate the woman in me. Amen. We should all celebrate the women in us. But honestly, that's kind of like the rest of our <laughs> show here. Yeah. But I really believe that if you've ever been interested by her... At baseline, it's such a great, easy read. It was really like it wasn't like complex sentence structure, which isn't shady. I have a hard time getting into books that feel like it's almost work. This was just it flowed. It flowed so well, and it's really compelling. And it tells a side of the story that the media we didn't get. You know what I mean? Um, public enemy number one, her father and Lou Reed. Public enemy number two, Justin Timberlake and her sister and her mother. And literally the public. And, and Diane Sawyer. Diane Sawyer needs to say something. Diane Sawyer, and it's like, she does. she's a great reporter, but to really- At what cost? That mm -hmm. interview, reading the book and understanding that Britney was not, she was forced to do this interview, didn't was not told what she was going to do, was so hurt by Justin and really just felt lost. And she was like, kind of mourning this relationship and Diane Sawyer just the way she fucking looks at her in this video it like made my blood boil because I rewatched it last night and I get it it was a long time ago but for again the same thing I said about Justin if Diane continues and she just isn't saying anything which I tried to look up last night didn't see anything but just girl, say something just say something like no humanity in the way that she treated her and um, disrespect Hey, I look at her differently now. But um, Brittany, we love you. Campers, mm. I think I love you more. Um, a great show. We yeah. just put a little um, a little bonus episode out on Patreon. We have Trail Mix coming out on Monday. So if you have stories for that, please write in on the website, campcounselorspodcast.com. If you haven't yet, please leave us five stars wherever you listen on podcasts. Leave us a little review. It really helps the podcast. Um, really exciting news coming up on the way. Is there, I just like to say that. I don't know. The exciting <laughs> news is that we're still doing the show um, and that we love doing it and we have so much fun. So um, we're going to go get pasta and I'm really craving an Aperol spritz. And if I want garlic bread, please just let me order it and don't say anything about it. You yeah, know, I'll order a basket. We'll I don't, share it. I just don't need double carbs, but I'm obsessed with carbohydrates. Okay. And with that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.